I, I um, long ago fell in love with Benedictinism. I was just a kid. And um, God sat on a, a cloud someplace mm -hmm. and watched for every bad thing to happen. Okay, okay. Uh, said, said that we all had free will and then um, used it to catch us at our worst moments. That's a small mm -hmm. child's mind. Yeah, but that, yeah. was, that was my well, spiritual yeah, universe, yeah. right? Yeah. The second part of that universe was um, at about the age of eight, nine at most, mm -hmm. I used to make a visit to church, the church that was right next to the school, of course. Yeah. And, uh, every night after school, I went over there and I walked the aisles looking at the stained glass windows. Why? Mm -hmm. Because my name was Joan, and I had discovered Joan of Arc. Yeah. So I went through every window looking for women saints. I didn't find any. You no. Know, okay. That's reality also. Believe it or not, that was a disappointing thing for a nine-year-old child. Oh, I can understand. Where, where, where were the women saints? Why, why, why was this a man's church and only the men uh, had churches? Well, my mother explained it to me in the best, worst possible way. And uh, it set me on a path mm -hmm. that I only discovered 20 years later, maybe. Yeah. Where was this fire inside coming? And mm -hmm. then in the middle of that, I ran into the Benedictines mm -hmm. at, uh, in, in my high school life. I had had another order of sisters, but we moved. And from Ambridge to Erie. And when I got to Erie, uh, again, th through um, a, a, lot, a lot of stumblings, uh, wound up with the Erie Benedictines. Now, all of a sudden, the nine-year-old search and the freshmen in high school came together. These women were beautiful. They were funny. They loved us kids. They played with us and stayed after school and set us up in great uh, projects. Picked us up where, where we were at our best and, and told us to develop that. And I began to watch them and that life very carefully. Because you see, now I had, um, I had contrast. I had had this. And I had had yeah, okay. Now, out of that, then, comes the love for this very simple spirituality. Mm -hmm. We are fond of saying in a Benedictine house that uh, Benedict's uh, goal was for us to learn how to live an ordinary life in an extraordinary way. Yeah, that, that, that's a very intriguing phrase. I think I read it in the book. And it seems to me that in one phrase you can say that monastic life and life has everything to do with each other, and, and I find it very intriguing. That's exactly right, and it re it really does have everything. This uh, Benedictinism is not a job; it's mm -hmm. not even uh, a goal. It is a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a way you deal with all the light and dark parts of life. And that in each of them, there is a learning and in each of them, there is a gift. You may not, it may not be recognized now. You may look back in 15 years and say, I never would have been by that. And all of a sudden it's there. So what you find when you pick up this little book about four to five inches high and about, four inches wide, 72 very short little chapters, and none of them a list of penances or do's and do nots. It's all about this life with the presence of God. So that what, what you want to do in life is know, recognize the will of God and keep it, keep it, and then you'll be happy. When people hear the word rule, they think about rules, regulations, 
that uh, the rule of Dick Benedict does not focus on rules, regulations. It seems it gives, uh, it's an attempt to get free, to become free. Uh, is, is it true? Well, there's a sweet line in the rule. There were there were a couple, got me as a kid, really, stopped me cold. The one was that um, everybody in the community, even the elderly, uh, needs to be given a task. What? I said to myself, oh my, these people are, they're, they're just ridiculous. I mean, they, they won't even let you sit down and enjoy life when you're old. And then I watched the old and I realized that all of them got up in the morning to do something. Yeah. They didn't complain about it. They, if it was nothing but passing out the mail, you got your mail every day. And, and you got a note with it that said, Dear Sister Joan, this person has written to you three times. Are you writing back? <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, get on with it, girl. Let's see what we can make of this. So mm -hmm. you, you have this, that, that, that line froze me. And But what did I get from it as the years went by? That every, what he's saying is nobody is ever not important in a better community. When people think about monks in, in an epic, they, they often think that they are keeping themselves far away from what is happening in the world. When I read your book, I would say, no, it's on the contrary. <laughs> yeah, on the contrary. <laughs> well, sure. I mean, the world comes in the door to us. Yeah. When, when people are worn out on the streets, when, the, when, they're, when they're absolutely exhausted, the doorbell rings. Mm -hmm. And and somebody yeah. needs needs to see them, if only to hear them, certainly to talk to them, maybe to get them something important, maybe to help them find somebody else to talk yeah. to, and mm -hmm. who has it can be effective with them. Uh, it's the number of people I know. We're supposed to think it's all over. I understand that. I've been here for 70 years. I'm good at thinking it's all over. But at the same time, I, I can tell you this, people are still streaming to those doors. When they come in, they, they say something like this, sister, I love to come here, it's so peaceful. We say, where, where is it? <laughs> where, where you go <laughs> to, to find what they found? <laughs> so our lives go on the way they go. You know, and for somebody, uh, for me, if, if there's a listener out there, that person should be saying, well, that's fine, but where are you? Yeah. And the answer yeah. is, my community has me exactly where they know I belong and that I'm happy doing it. So, yes, I, I, I find a good father, Eric Gala, and I, and I say, I'll talk to him. He okay. We'll be fine. Uh, I find somebody else who says um, we're having real difficulty with these changes in the church. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of our members just think it's terrible. Uh, could you come? Could you come some night and just sit with us? And take questions. Mm -hmm. So the point is that the, the, these monasteries are still they're very vital. Because why? How could you call that? How could you say it's vital when you have um, uh, nuns and priests living, uh, leaving uh, day after day around the world? Well, it's a new world and new people are coming and new people, as some people have, they, they were fine for, for 40 years, but now there's a time to help them. Help them. We, it's not a numbers game. Religious life is not a numbers game. One doesn't find it uh, very often that human development and spirituality go hand in hand. And I think that's your vision that they go hand in hand. When we are looking for is a life with God. And that will take 
some development. That's going to take some personal development beyond mommy, may I, daddy, can I? I mean, we, we don't, we're not looking for that. We're looking for committed men and women whose life is devoted to remembering and demonstrating the presence of God among us and the will of God in life. And that that life is a healthy, a mentally healthy, physically um, uh, gifted uh, way of life. And it means that every member know themselves and, and understand as the chapter seven in the rule of Benedict on humility. Mm-hmm. Who am I? And who do I want to be? And is there any simple way I can get there? And the answer is, oh, my dear, yes. Oh, indeed, yes. But also the, the word humility is, I think, very often understood wrong. Because humility doesn't, doesn't mean that you have to keep small and keep quiet. And Well, humility and humiliations yes. are not synonyms. <laughs> humility says, I know who I am. I know who these others are and, and uh, how they have gifts I don't have. They will answer from, for the ones I don't have, and they will support me in the ones I do have. So that together we are an active, viable, uh, peaceful, loving community. It's, it is, it's a very different thing than what Jansenism was looking for in the 18th century. That was a spirituality of negativity, yeah. of uh, sin and repression and rejection. And uh, I would argue that a lot of people, I'm sure a lot of people uh, achieved a, a kind of holiness there. I, I don't deny that, but I also uh, insist that we recognize that when you break personalities like that into unreal pieces, you will have a lot of people who break down too. Mm-hmm. So, so this development thing is uh, is not a a um, it it it's not a kind of twentieth century cosmetic. It is who am I? What are people seeing in me? That's the big thing about community, Eric. Community is what shapes us. You can go live alone in in your little cave. And you can throw things at every wall every night out of your um, infantile approach to difficulties. But you will never be fully adult, let alone a fully Mm -hmm holy human being. So community rubs the edges off. It helps us know ourselves. Others know us too. And we also know where we can go in this group to get help, both internal, external, psychological, emotional, spiritual. There's somebody there who's either been through it or watches it, has wisdom in it. We grow together. Development means that you have to be open to learning at all times. At all times. You're going, you're going to get up every single Tuesday morning and have a door slammed in your face called life. Another interesting thing in your book is how you speak about uh, creation. For a lot of people, creation is something that applies only in God's hands and creation is finished. And in your opinion, creation is something that is still going on. No, I am very clear about that. I I bet I've said it a hundred times to people. Try to remember. Yes, indeed, God created the world. But God didn't finish the world. God left that to us. Each of us has a responsibility to the full development of the planet on which we're living. And look where we are. 
Look, where. tell me that that's false. Tell me that that is some sort of, of uh, immature holiness. Now, it's, it's that kind of breadth of responsibility for the very planet itself that we lack terribly right now. If 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 I if I were teaching in a church and and looking for uh, the ten values of Christian values, the very first one would be creativity. Save yes. this planet. Yes.